Hi everyone, Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. Thanks again for watching. This is your look ahead issued on Wednesday the 19th of November. Thanks again for watching. Now uh, before we take a look at the forecast, Christmas is coming so if you're thinking about early Christmas presents uh, I couldn't resist the plug for my DVD. So that's, uh, that's the Weatherwise DVD. Uh, we sold thousands of these and uh, just had a new batch of them coming ready for Christmas. You can order those from the website and also um, my Pocket Weather Forecaster book as well which uh, takes a look at different cloud types and it tells you the weather that those cloud types are likely to bring. You can order those from the website as well. Just had a new stock of those in ready for Christmas. So if you want to get your orders in, get them in now. The link is at the bottom of the page here. Okay, uh, on with the uh, forecast and we'll uh, take a look see how this stratospheric warming is getting on. Models still struggling uh, with trying to pin down that event. So uh, let's take a look and see what they're saying today. So this is the um, satellite analysis of temperature at 10 HPA, uh, 10 millibars, from the early hours of this morning. This is a satellite pass that was made. And what it shows here, look, is the cold pool of air displaced uh, just to the south of the pole um, to the east of Greenland. Here is the warming that's being predicted actually beginning to take place in the stratosphere. If we take a look at the uh, model, this is how the model saw the analysis last night. So you kind of compare that with that to give you a start point. And you see that the uh, numerical modeling was seeing a slightly more intense area of warmth here. Um, in the uh, in the Pacific, um, but then if we go to five days, um, you see there that the the model predicting that the intensity of that warming has increased across the Pacific. Notice this area of cooling in here, and then watch at ten days what happens. Look, we get still the area of warming, but it's being squeezed into the states here, and we're seeing cooling take place here cooling within here or rather a cold area within here cooling taking place within here so we do have this split cooling effect as well and that kind of builds into the overall picture uh, of some colder weather potentially getting down into the uh, northern hemisphere but um, what you always have to look at with these things is that there are lots of factors that need to come into play. So again, we, we're still this morning heading for a risk of probably 20 to 30 percent chance that cold weather may try and get in right at the very end of this month. Um, so that would be the end of next week into the early part of December. Um, but still, the whole jigsaw's not quite coming together. But uh, we have seen that warming taking place. That's a start uh, so that's certainly a start of things um, and it'll just be interesting to see how this one develops still very early in the season and still not particularly cold across Europe either um, just show you uh, this one this is the temperature anomaly though the forecast temperature anomaly for Europe for the next seven days and um, you see here look this cold area out here towards the east the warmth here still down through France getting down into Iberia and staying with temperatures above normal by about one and a half degrees across most of the UK now just compare that with globally where we are at the moment so that's the global picture and that one shows look uh, the cold air that's across the state some really cold weather through central and southern parts of the states at the moment here's our cold pool in the Atlantic look and um, here is the cooler weather across Scandinavia and just notice here look across Russia how things have come up a little bit since the early part of the month when we were into cool conditions and just notice this warmth here look across the eastern parts of Europe in the month so far but then as I've just shown you by the time we're getting through the next seven days look we're starting to see this colder air starting to make some progress back westwards again so we're not seeing particularly signs from the models yet of, uh, of a cold weather outbreak and as I say the risk is relatively low but there are a, a few signs sort of just starting to creep in of cooler weather somewhere around the hemisphere 
Um, so this is the CFS from 19th of November through to the 28th, uh, through to the 25th, sorry, uh, week one. These are the higher than normal heights out towards the east, lower than normal out towards the west. Look, there's the trough with the ridge off towards the east, which is what we're um, experiencing right now. Uh, if we just take a look at week two, um, CFS having difficulty with this one. It's trying to get the trough back in and still sees the ridge off towards the east. So it's trying to get the ridge back in on a south or south easterly flow, bringing wet weather across more southern and western areas, trying to keep the east and the north drier. Um, and in terms of temperature, it kind of gives a glance, glancing blow of colder temperatures through Scotland, um, perhaps briefly northeast England, um, but actually brings near normal temperatures to most of the country. And the uh, week three and week four, week three looking like this with trying to get the trough into the country, ridge off towards the east. So it tries to get this trough through, tries to get us into more unsettled conditions. Now, you can kind of see the reasons why that might happen, because one of the impacts of a stratospheric warming event is that it does push the jet stream south. So what it's trying to do here, look, is build the ridge across the state, get the jet stream down here, pull it further southwards from the UK so putting low pressure basically across southern parts of the UK and that would be cold low pressure as well so we would be into cold conditions with rain with strong winds and some snow on the hills certainly so it sort of sees that pattern taking place and the dynamics of the model trying to pick up on that and then week four it tries to get the high and properly extending it across as a ridge from the eastern states, building it back in almost a cross polar flow here, look, um, with that ridge. So the ridge going cross polar uh, into week four and the high centered across the UK and into the Atlantic as well with a flow something like that. So going in for the idea of a general easterly push uh, to the flow, bringing in cooler conditions in that middle part of December. Um, it sees something. The CFS is certainly seeing something, but it's jumping around all over the place. The uh, midday run from yesterday actually puts higher pressure uh, than this up towards the north of the UK. So add it up here for December and basically put in a cold northeasterly through December across the whole of the UK with low the normal heights down here and um, went for a really wintry scenario through much of December, particularly the beginning part of the month. Now, it's jumping around. It can't make its mind up what's going to happen. So it feels like the atmosphere at the moment is kind of teetering on the edge of trying to do something. And there are certainly signs there from the various different models of something taking place, particularly since the operationals, the day-to-day -day models are all over the place. They're giving slightly different scenarios every time a run is updated. Uh, and that indicates something is happening, but trying to get that pinned down uh, is always the tricky bit. So as I say, at the moment, I think we need to work on this sort of 20 to 30% idea that there could be some colder weather on its way. But of course, that still means that we're up at a 70% chance that the cold weather won't arrive. Um, looking at the moment at um, evidence that will bring up those percentages for cooler weather arriving. Now, as far as the next few days go, let's just take you through what's going on there today. Here's our occluded front look coming in through Ireland into uh, Wales, into southwestern parts of England. That's bringing out breaks of rain with it, and they will be spreading uh, northeastwards during the course of tonight. Now, Thursday, probably fairly cloudy. I think quite a cool day, bits and pieces of drizzle out towards the west, but still under the influence of that high over more eastern areas. Friday sees more active fronts coming in to the west, rain driving its way northwards. Friday could be a pretty horrible day across central and western areas with lots of cloud around. But milder weather is uh, getting into the south. So we've seen this sort of milder air coming northwards late on uh, Friday, but really it just looks like a particularly unpleasant day out to the west. Saturday, still got the remnants of the front around. Uh, not sure it's going to be that position now. I think it's basically going to be bringing rain through here. Brighter weather getting into the west, 
cooler and fresher there. But across uh, East Anglia, South East England, the Eastern Midland, Central Southern England could be a misty, murky, yucky, damp day. And probably fairly mild, though, even in that rain. And then on Sunday, you see there, look, the rain hanging around in the east. Still more outbreaks of rain to come across from the eastern areas. Um, but drier and brighter elsewhere, although some cloud across northern and western parts of Scotland, this ridge building in. I have to say, that chart for Sunday, I'm not sure that's going to come off like that. But hey, we'll uh, we'll wait and see. I, I think we've got some real struggles going on once we get past about day four at the moment on the models. And then Monday still places the front across the southeast, still clouds, still outbreaks of rain down here. More persistent rain getting into the west of Ireland, drier elsewhere with a fair amount of cloud around. Um, and what about temperatures? Well, let me just show you the uh, temperature graph. I need to... Um, I need to call it up, so just bear with me just a second. We need to get this uh, from WeatherWeb. So if you'll just give me uh, a moment, let's uh, let's get this going. There we go. And let me show you what I mean. This is the ensemble temperature prediction. And um, notice what's going on here, look. We've got this gradual fall in temperatures during next week, and this has been pretty consistent. So the ensemble sees something. It sees cooler temperatures arriving. It's still not cold. I mean, we're looking here at sort of 7 degrees or 8 degrees by day. So it's still not cold, but it is seeing that general downward trend in temperatures. Um, and I think that's something that we... Uh, we just need to be watching. Um, the ensembles themselves, I mean, still looking at the ECMWF ensemble, that still um, looks like this. Uh, what it's trying to do is to get the ridge off towards the east moved away look. It tries to bring that low north of Scotland through the weekend and into the early part of next week, and then tries to get us into more of an unsettled southwesterly. Um, although what it does do is it does deepen off the lows here towards the northwest of Scotland. It puts the jet through kind of here. So it is trying to get the jet south of us. I just think this is all too far north. If, if this warming event does anything, it will push those lows further south. And the jet would probably be somewhere through here as a split um, event with the high getting back up here and another section of the jet going up like that that's the pattern that we've uh, that we've got to look for as i say still it is a low risk okay so i'll leave you with that for now but don't forget you can subscribe to us on youtube and that way you'll get the uh, very latest notifications when the videos are updated you can watch them of course through the website at weatherweb.net as well but for now whatever you're doing don't forget your uh, christmas dvds and books and uh, have a great day keep the sun shining and bye for now